I spent four years at the School of Oriental and African Studies, London University, doing my first degree. And never once, never once in all those years did I learn anything about any African civilization. <laughs> Anthropology has for a long time had a love affair with the primitive. And the great interest, the almost exclusive interest, has been on that little man living on the edge of the world. And I know about that little man because I'm a primitive. I spent nearly 14 years in the jungle, and not the jungles of Africa, the jungles of South America. I was born in Georgetown, but I spent a great part of my boyhood in the jungle. I lived, therefore, on the periphery of the South American civilization. I was three quarters African and about a quarter Makusi Indian. I could not, for a moment, think that to do an ethnography of the Makusi Indian, a little primitive tribe on the edge of the world, I would be giving any vision whatsoever of South American civilization. I little knew then that behind me lay Mahapiku, a city carved out of sheer rock, calling for the engineering ingenuity unparalleled in Europe at the time. I little knew that my, the Makusi had cousins with the Mexicans, and I'm not talking about the strong Mexico of the day, I'm talking about Mexico when it was the center and core of Native American civilization. And Columbus himself never saw that Mexico. Columbus wandered on the edge or periphery of America. Columbus, in fact, never once, never once set his foot on the American continent. Even within recent history, the recent recorded history of the world, of the Americas, of Africa, we, have, we are faced with massive delusions. And the object of this conference here, the mission of the scholars who have come to this conference, is to put an end, at least the beginning of an end, to this madness. We know very little, or rather we have known very little, of the technologies of early Africa because of this concentration on the primitive. I grew up in a jungle twice as large as any jungle in Africa. Africa, in fact, has less jungle than any other continent comparable with its land space. If you took two Europes and put it in Africa, there is more wooded woodland and forest in two Europes than there is in Africa. Our image of jungle springs from the fact that most anthropologists, at least in the past, it may be changing slightly now, and with these studies, it will change even more rapidly. Most anthropologists have been satisfied to go looking for vanishing little tribes, utterly irrelevant, the Wooga Booga and the Luga Booga. <laughs> and they go and they spend six months a year and they study all they know about the Luga Booga. All their little ritual and their dances and their kinship system, who is my mother's brother, sister, son, etc. Utterly irrelevant any illuminating vision of African civilization. And they come and they extrapolate masses of things about it. And so we have thousands and thousands of books about Africa that tell us absolutely nothing about the quintessential Africa. <laughs> this has been the case for at least five centuries. It is only within the last five years that we have had discoveries that make us aware of what is happening in Africa. Only within the last few years, five to fifteen years, only a few men have come forward and have given us this vision. Because even many of our so-called African scholars are so Europeanized that they merely repeat and echo <laughs> what they have done. And I'm not using the word Europeanized in a racial sense. I too, like Sheikh Antidioc, can claim 
perhaps with even more justification, that I have not a racist streak in my being. I am saying this because it is true. And I'm saying it because I believe in what I call the Eurocentric and Afrocentric visions. It has nothing to do with color or skin. It's a state of mind. It's a state of consciousness. It is just a tragedy and a truth that most people who have Eurocentric consciousness happen to be white. But this is also true of a great many of our blacks. And I speak having traveled throughout the black world. A great many of our people have no conception whatsoever of where they come from, what is going on, and where they're going. <laughs> and I have heard many of my people say, we have to start from scratch. Let us admit we did nothing. Even in the tongue-in-cheek poetry of Césaire, though Césaire is a great poet, we never meant it in that sense. We who explored nothing, we who invented nothing, this is far, far from the truth. Just a few years ago, in 1978, two American scientists, Schmidt, Schmidt and Avery, discovered that Africans were smelting steel 1,500 to 2,000 years ago in Tanzania. They were smelting it in a machine that was using a semiconductor technology unknown until the 20th century. They were making steel at 1,850 degrees centigrade. No machine, no iron smelting machine in Europe or anywhere else had achieved those temperatures. The highest recorded in Europe was about 1,620 degrees centigrade in a second century furnace, Roman draft furnace. And not only that, not only they found the Africans were producing a fine bloom of carbon steel, they were doing it in a single stage so that even in the middle of the 19th century, when George Wilhelm Siemens, the German, found a method for mass producing steel, the European process in the mid 19th century involved two stages, whereas the African process involved just one. They were do using iron crystallization process in order to produce that steel. And they were doing it not only more efficiently, not only were they producing a finer bloom of steel, but they were doing it using less fuel. The Africans were forced very early into fuel-saving technology. These things have only recently come to light, and they have changed our understanding of what really happened in the ancient world. And right in that area where you see these little shattered villages, that is where an industrial site had grown up 1,500 years ago. We were often told about how we were dragged out of the bush and how colonization lifted us up. Few of us are aware. We are aware of what happened to the transplanted black, but very few of us are aware what happened to Africa itself. You cannot imagine what a Holocaust hit Africa. You cannot imagine what it is to take about 100 million people, the youngest people, and rip them out of the heart and core of a continent, the disintegration of family networks, the tremendous things that fell on Africa, the disease in one area in Tanzania, there were five million head of cattle, Europeans came in, introduced rinder pests, not deliberately, but they introduced it nevertheless, almost all the cattle disappeared. You cannot imagine in the Americas, Millions of people vanished just because of the common coal which Europeans had introduced in America. You are not aware of the massive destruction of civilization so that people could mock us now and say, are you talking about all the great things that you did? If you did all of these great things, why are you not great now? What has happened to you? Why are you so broken and shattered and fragmented and lost? Why do you feel so inferior? We feel inferior and fragmented because we have lost a sense of the wholeness of our history.